Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. All right, anybody that's been following us knows that we announced that we're gonna build an earth ship. Bam! There's the build set of the blueprints. Um, of these blueprints, we got a build set, we got a detail set, and we got a mechanical set. Now, I know that not a lot of people out there, not everybody out there has a background in any kind of construction. So we're gonna try to break this thing down in a way to where most people can understand it, okay? And the cool thing about a earth ship is that every single one of them is custom. Now, there are certain features of this thing. If it's gonna do what you want it to do, heating and cooling and stuff, it has to be oriented in the right direction to begin with. And so this way for us is south, okay? Now, this way is north. For this thing, some of the features that are you just can't compromise on is that this thing has to be oriented south. And in fact, it needs to be oriented and cheated to the east, which is that way, about 10 to 15 degrees. But in the prints, it says 10 degrees. Now, I've been studying these for quite some time, and I know, it, I know a lot of the features that have to happen to make this thing work the way it's supposed to. And William also has spent two months at the Earthship Academy, so he has a background in messing with these things as well. So we're hoping, combined with his understanding of how these things are built, having put his hands on it, in my two plus decades of construction work, that we're gonna probably work this thing out. In fact, even without these prints, believe it or not, y'all, I feel reasonably confident that I could have put this thing together just, just based on what I read in the books. But at the end of the day, when you have prints, it makes your life so much easier. If for no other reason, then it gives you at least a basis of what you're gonna to need to purchase and get ahead of the things long before they're needed. Like, let's say the glass you might need or the roofing material you may need, the other things that you may need. That's why if you can, if you can afford it, in fact, I think you need to have a set of blueprints, whether you have experience or not. Okay, so where are we today? Okay, last time we showed a video of this, we had a number of folks out when we made that announcement. But there was a pile of junk here, much of which was made evident by the pigs that we started over here. Now there was piles and piles of wire, um, which like William said the other day, seems especially absurd in these parts considering that we have a free place to dump trash that I didn't even know about until this last weekend. So with all that junk out of here, William just spent the last couple of days taking stuff to the dump, getting rid of it. You name it, it's been found in here. I mean, these people were so trifling, they were throwing the Christmas trees with the ornaments on it right off the front porch. So you can only imagine what we found up in here. So with that said, everything's cleaned up. Okay, now it's on the phase two, which is mapping out exactly how this thing's gonna go. Now, in my pocket here, I got my handy dandy lensatic compass from way back. Bam, US issue, right? Anyway, it doesn't have the tritium, but we'll talk about that at another time. Something I've used since my days in the military to this day, I use it all the time. If you want to know how, check out Patreon. I talk about it in greater detail over there. But what we're going to do is use that compass to basically sight in exactly the direction we're going to need. Now, we've talked before in the last video that by all accounts, we're almost certainly going to have to tear down the barn. But we've come up with a different tact on having to go about that. And maybe we'll cover that in a minute. So we'll get this thing laid out. So what I want to do today is to do nothing more, nothing more than to lay the footprint of where I want this thing to go. Now, based on our operator, this thing may be shifted away this way, that way. Who knows? Before it's all said and done, it may move several times, but that's important. Do it on the front end. Get your prints, plan your project. Remember that acronym, President Reagan can't sing ca cadence. I use it in all things, planning, recon, control, security, common sense. In this case, planning, you got the prints. Recon means I'm looking at it. Control, you know, make sure you keep things about you. Instead of security, we're gonna say safety. You dig? And common sense. That's all the things, those same five principles of patrolling that I learned all those years ago in the army are gonna be used on this project just like we do on every other project. So with that said, the first thing we're gonna do is sight this compass in, get our azimuth of the way this building needs to be oriented, and then we're gonna take these little uh, intermediate spikes, we're gonna lay that around, and folks, this is just the reality of doing this kind of work. I may reposition this thing 20, 30 times before it's all said and done, but that's where we're gonna start. You got two methods, you got the center hold and you got the compass to cheek method. 
I need to be accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that compass to cheek method and um, use this as my starting, my preliminary starting point. And I'm gonna to try to get me a general azimuth and see where I wanna be in this hill. Now, instead of 90 degrees, I'm gonna back it off 15 degrees. All right, y'all, what you didn't see on camera right now are the hours it took for us to get to this point where we even have something to lay out. That's the challenges of living in these mountains. Beautiful, wonderful place to live. No other place I'd rather live, but it does pose some serious challenges, engineering challenges too, as you're gonna find out as this thing unfolds. Um, yeah, it would be wonderful to just have a level spot somewhere that was absolutely perfect. But what we kept running into, no matter how we did it, is if we angled too much into the hill, then the roof on the back side of the earth ship is going to be in the hill. So if I remember right on the prints, it's going to be eight foot five to a point where we where we really start having problems. Actually, it's closer to nine foot nine point five nine feet five inch or six inches. So we had to play with this thing. I can't even tell you how many times I shot an azimuth with the compass. We walk it out, measure it out, look at it, use a hundred foot tape, kind of get to some point to where we like it and then have to turn back around. Now, there are some things that we're gonna do. Now, I, don't, I usually tell everybody stick to the recipe, but there are times for engineering reasons that you can't necessarily do it the way the prints call for. And we'll make adjustments. In those cases, we call those as built, meaning the way it was actually built. So we'll make those, we'll make those adjustments. In fact, there's gonna be a great many of them before this thing's all said and done. It's gonna be, it's gonna have a lot of all the wonderful things of an earth ship, but because of our terrain and because of the things that, the challenges we have here, you know, there's some things we gotta change, things we gotta redo. We're going to build this thing and it's going to be, it's going to be something that I think we're gonna be proud of. The cool thing about this structure is that it, there's, it's so custom built that there are things, deviations, that you can make on certain things. Other things like the orientation, you can't have this thing face north unless you're making a root cellar. <laughs> so you need to really have the orientation right. And there's some other things in here that gotta be right. The cooling tubes and a number of other things. So what's gonna happen at this point? Okay, here's where I'm gonna employ my subconscious. And so is William. Because now that we have this up, I now have a visual reference that I can see every single day, okay? And even though I may not be consciously thinking about it, I guarantee I'm going to wake up tomorrow. My subconscious is doing all the calculus right now for things that I haven't even yet thought of. Then when I wake up tomorrow, almost certainly, this thing just might change a little bit or a lot, depending on that. But I want a visual reference, and this is important when you're doing things like this, a visual reference I can see every day to where I can okay, you know what? I just had an idea. Maybe I need to tweak it this way. Maybe I need to go that way. You see? Because there's also the other issue. If you see where this thing's going, we'll go down this way so you can kind of look down it. All right, so here's the front side of it. And we talked before about having to tear down the barn. Sorry, y'all, the dogs are over here tripping. Of all the times, just like Eric Sider said the other day, 
wait until you're filming and then this is what's going to happen these dogs are going to be over here making all kinds of noise and barking and playing and carry on just go ahead and show it son Yeah, so you got Chloe and Milk Boy over there. Didn't do, didn't make a peep until we decided to start filming anyway. Here's the other challenge I was talking about. I said we were going to have to tear down the barn. Okay, well, yeah, we are. But if you can see where this is going, we don't have to tear down the entire barn. And that's a big part of the plan here because honestly, on any good construction job, you're going to have a place you call a lay down yard or where you put the materials you're going to use. Well, if I could keep half of that barn, Great, because there's materials I don't want wet. There's other things that I don't want wet. So it's like, okay, take that, get a Connex, you know, whatever. I need something that is as close to my work site as possible. So if there is some way in the opening of that barn this way, as much of that as I can keep at the present moment, because it's all going to go down eventually. The plan is we'll try to demolish everything from the right side of that opening that way. We'll take all that out, but at least we'll have half a barn and that's going to be good enough and that'll make sense in the future because it's raining right now it's starting to rain anyway and that's going to be consequential if i don't have to take everything out of here go move it up if i can just go 30 feet away and put it where it goes how wonderful is that all right here's the back side this thing is probably hard for you to get a sense of perspective but that'll be the back side of the house and look where it's going, straight down, right through the barn. Okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Instead of having to demolish this whole thing, which we will do because I can't stand this lean-to design anyway, I want a legit barn that I'm proud of, and I love the construction of this one here. They just kind of threw it together, and I don't think they cared too much. Never liked this location, never liked the look about it. Who needs you anyway, barn? So anyway... The good thing is, is that this intersects just on these stalls that I have on the other side. Now we did a lot of retrofitting in this barn and we were doing a lot more. We got a hot wire going all the way around that does certain things, but you know what? This makes better sense than any other location I can possibly think of. So that's exactly the plan. Half of that barn roughly, actually a third of it, I think is gonna have to go away. No big deal, fine. And then we'll tear the rest of it out after the structure is built. But this is exactly what we have planned, y'all. It's gonna dig into this hill. And then of course there are other design issues when you deal with an earth ship because there's typically tubes going out of the back. Well, we got engineering solutions for those as well. Um, it's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be some tough work. It's gonna be back breaking at times. But honestly, I, I really feel like I'm up for another challenge. I mean, this whole place in and of itself is a challenge. I don't mean that that by any homesteading in and in of itself is a challenge. But folks, at the same time, another thing you have to consider is that the farm doesn't stop. We still got animals that need looked after. We have other things, other enterprises that need to be looked after. We have different things that all still need to be maintained and also advanced. So we have all those things. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that we just can't I would love to be in a position of where we could just single minded like a laser beam, go after this project alone. We just can't do that. Now our other food systems, they're currently like the chicken tractor on steroids. Go back and check that out. All that stuff is getting to the point where it's winding down. Actually, it may not be, but we'll talk about that in a few, because we got some exciting developments that may just happen within that system. The cool thing about all this stuff is that we got a food system on lock. That is first and foremost. There's other things like our water. Pretty happy with how that's panning out. Doesn't hurt that we live in a temperate rainforest either. So um, that's squared away. The fundamentals are all knocked out. The only thing left to do is uh, a high tunnel, which by the way, if we're gonna have heavy equipment out here doing this, we just as well grade it for what that's gonna need as well. That's another project entirely. We got a lot of moving parts going on here, y'all. But the good thing is, is I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. And frankly, I'm just, this is, if I can, not if, when I get this done, this is going to be one of the many things I have on my list of things that in my lifetime I would love to accomplish. This is one of them, and we're going to make it happen. So until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. 
We'll see you all next time.